It's unstable to be with Sarah and Maggie. Hey, bestie. Hey, bestie. So, oddly enough, I had. Hold on, it says error. Okay, we're going to keep going. It's Oddly fine. enough, I had an error. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough, I guess it's not really odd, but I had a really weird dream last night that I had a pool in my backyard <gasps> and I didn't know I had a pool. Like everyone's like, oh no, we're coming over to go swim in your pool. I'm like, I don't have a pool. And I walk into my backyard and there's a pool. And I'm like, wow, I have a pool. This this frees up so much of my anxiety of what to do with my kids during the summer because I have a pool in my backyard. So it's like my dream merging with like conscious thoughts in my brain, like rationalizing why this pool, this fictional dream pool is a good idea. Can you imagine if you woke up one day and your friends had surprised you by building an in-ground pool? I wouldn't – it would have to be like a week vacation. And you come I, back and, and you I have come a pool. back as in-ground pool. I don't know if I would – Would you like that? I know. I'd be pissed. I'd be pissed. I'm like, no. Do you know how much work – and oh, I remember distinctly in my dream, my parents said, hey, have you checked the chlorine level of your pool? I'm like, what? No. I didn't know I had a pool. Like, yeah, you should really do that before anyone gets in. I'm like, oh, okay. It's like a gift that gives you so much more work and a higher water oh, bill. We had a pool when we moved back to Texas um, from Georgia. My parents, we had a pool when I was a sophomore in high school. And thinking back on it, and my parents, I can hear them now saying, you guys never used that pool. And now I'm like, why didn't we ever use the pool? You know? Because it's 110 degrees at like yeah. 8 a.m., you and know? It's bath water, essentially, at that point. Right. Yeah. I, I have been in the pool already a lot more this summer than previous summers I've been yeah. going because the kids are old enough now where they're more responsible around the water. I don't feel like I'm – I mean, I'm watching them very carefully, but I don't feel like at any moment they're going to just run into the water, mm. you know, mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. like walk off the edge. They have respect I feel like they have more the spatial, spatial awareness, so I feel better about going to the pool. Yeah. But it's it's about to be – too hot for water even i know i know it's it's wild i still not like in theory water parks and pools are a good idea but you get me to those places i'm like eh, this is i don't want this i don't want this do you know i used to be a lifeguard at a water park i did know you used to be this and this is what we've had this conversation because like sarah don't ever go to water park because i used to be a lifeguard at one and i know the dirty secrets it's it's one of those things that I just get this sinking gross feeling in my belly thinking of all the band-aids and wedgies and hairy backs. Uh, but it's also, I feel like, a part of childhood that you have to go to a water park. I know. And your parents have to hate taking you. Yes. 100%. But it's the smell, like the sunscreen smell and the just like boogers. It's It's not public pools – and public water parks, or just even private, I don't know, what are water parks? Private water parks? I think they're all pub, all water parks you have to pay entry. Yeah, yeah. But they're not, the. they're not, you need a lot of chlorine yes. in those waters. So I was looking at splash pads last night, and I saw this really cool one um, in a city close to ours, and I was doing some more reading, and it had like this diagram or infographic about how to keep be safe and it's like don't pee in the water don't do this because it showed in this infographic how the water goes down and then it's quickly filtered and comes back i'm like oh i'm never going to this again i never thought about that like if a little kid or somebody pees in that water (gasps) it's just filtered it's recycled all recycled water it's not new water oh Right? Oh gosh, no! I mean, I I know that like water gets recycled after going through like the water treatment plant. Uh-huh. I never thought that at a splash pad filled with very young children, very young children that are a thousand percent urinating 100%. all over the ground in the water. They are just like that is. By the time it comes back up, I'm sure at the end of the water park day. The splash pad day, it is 95% urine. Has to be. I'm going to go look back at this infographic and I, I bet it says how quickly it's cleaned because it's got to be like 
cleaned, but still it's, yeah, it disturbed me to the point I'm like, I can't take them. It's free and it, it looks amazing and the kids would love it, but I'm like, I can't. And, and no. like, I'd rather not know. Now, right? I'd rather not know. They shouldn't have put that infographic out no. there. There are certain things in life that just don't tell me. Ignorance is bliss. And this is one of those times, you know? Um, Same. And speaking of dangerous water, are you ready for your fact? I am. Jaws, one of the most iconic lines from that movie, you're going to need a bigger boat, was improvised. As screen water, as screen writer, call, mm, mm, <laughs> as screen, as screen writer, Carl, I'm just calling Carl. As screen as the screenwriter Carl told the Hollywood Reporter, "You're gonna need a bigger boat." Had become a running joke on the film set, meant to signal small mishaps. Quote: It became such a catchphrase for any time something went wrong. The line was ad libbed at various times in the movie, and this is the one time that it made it to the final cut. I love the idea of being on set and anytime an actor forgets the line, it's just like, you're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> or, or like uh, one of the flags falls or a prop goes well, up. Oh, you're going to need a bigger boat. Oh, sorry. I wasn't recording audio. Wow, you're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> and I'm just thinking in this scene, right? They see in Jaws, they spoiler alert. They see the, the shark. And then he's like, you're going to need a bigger boat. And I'm wondering in that moment why why this time they thought this was like a mistake or something went wrong or funny. I think he probably, it's just he'd heard it so many times that it was like, it's one of those phrases that's just in your head. So mm. as you're stalling for time, you say something and it probably just came off, like rolled off the lips. I'm wondering if everyone on set was laughing when he said that or if like, they were like, oh. This is it. That works. <laughs> this is the moment. And or if the screenwriter was pissed, he's back there, you know, taking those good old Carl, like, son of a gun. You're going to change my dialogue. Son of a gun. That's better than anything I wrote in this entire script. You're not getting a writer's credit. You're not going to get it. But would you be, I feel like I would be equal parts, like, excited Mm -hmm. that that line came out because it makes the it makes the movie that it much is, better it is the movie i mean it how many times movie. do you hear someone say that it's a lot people quote that line a, a lot right would you be as carl would you be a little like sad that you didn't think of it or like like oh i wrote this awesome movie and it's got so many great pieces and yet the one line that people quote all the time i did not write or would you just be happy that people? I would the be. Movie? I would be happy because I think of when we filmed when we filmed Civic Duty, the jury scene. Isaac, one of our jurors, improvised a lot of lines about why he had to his character had to leave, and they were hysterical. It's true. They were so much better than anything you and I had written. And the final cut was one of his improvised lines, and I'm like, this made the film so much better because it's not you created the characters, Carl. Yeah, Carl. Carl. Don't worry about it. You made these no. wonderful, robust characters that mm -hmm. allowed the actors to improvise within the world you created. So mm -hmm. you know what, Carl? I, I agree with Sarah. It's not – you should not feel sad about that. You we don't know if Carl's sad. sad. We don't know if he's sad. We're just assuming because – I'm not assuming – yeah, I'm assuming we're that assuming he's he sad. felt some kind of way at some point. You, you know. know, when he – I don't know when he told the Hollywood Reporter this – and it might have been like out of spite too, because he could have been like, "Oh yeah, that was an improvised." Like before the line became a thing, mm. you know, it's like, "Oh no, 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 that was an improvised line that people were saying on set." Yeah, I don't know. I bet or he was the happy. guilt. Yeah, the guilt of like I can't take credit for this amazing line. An honest writer, you know. I'm about to sneeze. Okay. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. And we're I do need a bigger tissue. <laughs> I'll edit that out. I will say, though, on Carl's defense or behalf, it was something that organically came up on set. And you can't plan for those magical moments, no. you know? 
Can we try and say Carl's last name? Yes. It's G-O-T-T-L-I-E-B. Gottlieb? That's right. Gottlieb? 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 Gottlieb. Got- Carl, Carl Gottlieb. Lieb. L-I-E-B. E. E. Yeah. Gottlieb. Gottlieb? You think Lieb? Yeah. yeah because – Well, it's lie. Gart Lieb. But if it's – well, so if it's German – and it's two vowels together. You say the second one. Oh. And I know this because of my last name. That's really interesting. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Huh. Fact. Nah. Nah. I don't know if that's a German last name, though, because I have no understanding of country of origin. But, uh, you know, fact. A, f- a fact within a fact. Okay, Maggie, are you – we've talked about catchphrases and we talked about Carl's name enough. Are you ready for your react? I am. Okay. Pretty easy. What's your catchphrase? Great question. Mm-hmm. I think my catchphrase. Um, I'm trying to think of like things my kids repeat that I'm like, oh yeah, I do say that a lot, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Um, and some of those things would be, oh really, really. Uh, that might be a good one. Or, um, oh shoot, <laughs> oh shoot. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think uh, probably something along those lines. I think I say those a lot. I can also say those if I was like a superhero, I could say it in a good way or or a bad way. It can be like, oh, shoot. Oh, mm-hmm. really? Or it can be like, oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, shoot. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What's yours? Um, something that's come from this podcast is, wow, Maggie. Wow. That's true. That's and- a good one. And I have said it to my children. I'll go, wow, Maggie, wow. Like where they do something absolutely ridiculous. And Walter's like, I'm not Maggie, I'm Walter. I'm like, that's that's what makes it funny. That's the, that's actually, if I could, that's kind of the joke. It's like you have that's to explain your joke. catchphrase. Yeah, I, like, I had to explain. But not to everyone because we have so many listeners and they completely understand. Our that. listeners get it. Yeah, which, which is a I'm lot surprised people. because Walter's one of our Walter is an avid listener. He yeah. legit, and this is this is no joke, no beef or whatever. He legit asks to play unstable topics in the car, and we just listened to this week's, and it was the banana episode where I talk about how I try and be tricky with his banana and <gasps> say the whole top of the banana. And he goes, Mama, what are you saying? And I'm like, nothing, nothing. And then he goes, wow, Maggie, wow. Well, 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 it's time to take a brief break from all these facts and dive into the facts of our personal lives. Oh, really? Sarah and Maggie will cut through the airways with heartfelt true stories from the week. Sarah, you recently volunteered at a vacation Bible school to be the story reader at the start of the day. And something that I appreciate and I think that our bestie listeners would also enjoy is that you did this as a completely bizarre and delightful character. I don't know her name, but I would love for you to share a little bit about the background of this woman and, I don't know, maybe embody her okay. one time. Do you want, me to, the, do you want me to do the whole thing? And Well, yeah. tell me about... Okay. Tell me about her, so, and then maybe you can introduce her, and I can talk to her. Her name is Miss Patricia, and Miss Patricia started a few years ago when I, with my son, trying to get him to do chores or listen when he's not listening to me. As I would like, for those watching on YouTube, I would put like this little hand puppet in where I put my middle two fingers touch into my thumb, and then my pointer and my pinky are sticking straight up, and she would talk. And these are her eyes, my pointer and my pinky, and this is her mouth. And she would talk to Walter and uh, talk to him about life. And he would ask for Miss Patricia on occasion just to see what she was up to and how she was doing. And so this character became a human in a reel like a year and a half ago where I donned the purple blazer from our short film Blender and these glasses from another – Uh, promo video we made and put it together and that was Miss Patricia. So during Vacation Bible School, there's a part in the opening where uh, you retell a story. It's a story retelling portion. And I'm like, how can I make this engaging 
for uh, the kids that are there. And I'm like, I bet Miss Patricia would like to make an appearance. And so I uh, workshopped it with Walter and he said it was good. So I rolled it out. Well, uh, because if you, you know that Miss Patricia has a 100% listening rate. People love listening to Miss Patricia. <laughs> Sarah word. Adams is like, ah, you know, 50-50. <laughs> but Miss Patricia is always going to hit. Can I would, – would you mind? Could you bring out Miss Patricia? I'd just like to say thank you for all the work that she does. Hand Patricia or regular – oh, hello, Maggie. Oh. Oh, hello. Oh, I didn't know I was going to be on the interweb talking on this podcast today. Oh, my goodness. I just want to say, Walter, Walter, if you're listening, I just want to say you're fantastic. I think you're brilliant. And I just I just want to say hello. And Maggie, oh, my goodness. I'm here talking to you. I just hear so much about you. Miss Patricia, I just want to say thank you for all you do. Oh, Stop. You're an incredible resource to the community, to the internet, to look, children look, everywhere. Look, I'm going to stop you right there. I'm not anything more than just myself. If I say one thing and one thing, it'll only just be you. You know? If you're going to do anything in this life, go out. You be you. Because I'm going to be me and it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful music we make together. That is... That is the wisest thing I've ever heard on this podcast. Thank well, also, you. Also, don't forget that when you leave the house that you have fresh underwear on all the time. I can't tell you how many times I forgot to put on fresh panties. And that came back to get me in the behind. Literally. Literally. <laughs> That's a good joke, Maggie. Maggie, are you ready for a fact? I am. This one got me. Barcode scanners read the white spaces between the black lines rather than the black lines themselves. That's interesting yeah. to me. But, oh, so it could be any color or it has to be black for you the know, contrast? That's a really good question. I'm going to assume it has to be black for the contrast. I'm trying to think if I've seen packaging where it's like a purple or a um, – darker color but i can't think of any right now that that is literally reading between the lines boom and boom literally. goes the dynamite boom goes the dynamite if there's I, one, maybe that's where that came from maybe, maybe people were like read between the lines like a barcode scanner and then uh -huh. i thought of zebras you know how people are like are zebras white with black stripes or black with white stripes my daughter said they're black with white stripes. She said she learned that in school. And if MJ said it, I believe it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe barcodes learned from zebras. I don't know about that, though. I don't know. Because if it, what if a barcode guess, was black with white stripes and that's what makes them read? Because if it's not the black spaces, it's the white spaces. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I've seen you can do like cool things with them. People are starting to get creative with more graphic-y barcodes. Yeah. Which I think is, you know, fun. On the um, Nestle Toll House chocolate chip packages is the shape of a, like a mitten, like a. Uh, oh, that's cute. Like I would assume like a hot, a hot pad mitten to you would grab yeah. out of the oven, your cookies. Which did you know? Wait. Is this I was a fact? Is a fact? No, wait. This was – I don't know if this is actually true. Okay, so, so this is – I'm like going to say it anyways. Do it. It just has an asterisk next to I'm it. I'm going to say it as a question. Okay. What is the Arby's logo? Is it is it a hand? Is it an oven mitt? Is it an oven mitt? Like – oh, no, it's a hat. It's a cowboy hat. I thought it was a cowboy hat, but then am I – is this an alternate universe or did this actually happen? For a while, Arby had, Arby's had a mascot that was an oven mitt. I don't remember that. Are you thinking of Hamburger Helper? Um, I'm sorry. I have to Google this because Google I feel it. a little crazy. No, I don't ever remember. Yeah, uh, it did. It did? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. It's And then here's a quick – the first thing on Google is, what happened to Arby's <laughs> oven mitt? <laughs> I don't – let me look. I it was don't 2005 remember it. because I remember – What? Put a, link so I, put a link in the messages so I can see it. Okay. 
Um, so I, because I always thought it was a, a cowboy hat. I was like, oh, it's roast beef. Cowboys like beef. Sure. You know? Yeah. Uh, Arby's. But then I remember. The, we got the, the meats. Yeah. We got the, yeah, whatever. And then I remember in, it was like 2005, they stopped it. So this must have been like 2004, sometime around there. I distinctly remember watching a commercial and all of a sudden the Arby's logo turns into this oven mitt. And I was like, what is happening? <laughs> I was like, what? It was a shocking moment for me. So I'm glad this is true because I was like, maybe this was a fever dream. I don't know. Yeah. But that's what send I was going to say. I was like, did you image. know that the Arby's logo is an oven mitt? I texted it to you. No. T- oh, I thought in the in this uh Zencaster, there's the message side. Oh, uh, you know what? I pressed the little uh, message button and then it brought up like a help thing. And so oh. I didn't know. Well, here you go. Okay. Here you go. Okay. Here you go. I, um, I'm like, oh, I do remember him. It was Chris Parnell too that voiced him, right? I don't remember that. I think I never okay. even listened to a Voice. word he said because I was so shocked. But there's a lot of merch here. 2003, 2004. I remember him. Oh, no. It was comedian Tom Arnold. Oh, Tom sorry, Arnold. Chris Parnell. I saw it and immediately thought of Chris Parnell because, I mean, he's fantastic. But no, it's Tom Arnold. Yeah. Yeah. And it was probably like a Jack, trying to be like Jack in the Box. But it's like, I'm sorry. We're all confused why Arby's has an oven mitt. We're all confused by <laughs> Let's it. Let's be honest. I doubt Arby's is using an oven. Yeah. You know? They do have really good curly fries, though. I'll so. On that curly fry note, which brings us to our react back to the barcode scanners through our Arby's journey. And this is a this is an honest one. When you check out, say you have 15 items, do you do self-checkout or do you go to a register with the person? Um, I will do self-checkout, and here's why. Very rarely are there people at the other registers around at the shops I go to. It's like you are hard-pressed to find someone at the register, so I have to end up going with my entire cart of groceries and self-checking out. I will also say, just yesterday, I was at the store with all three of my children, my beautiful children, Mm -hmm. and they've been so patient. And I have a cart full of groceries and items. And so I'm like, you know what? I know Sarah has a hot opinion about people going to self-checkout. I will go to one of these not self-checkouts because I have a lot of items. And I, every time I do that, get stuck behind the person who is trying to use expired coupons and is like, call over a manager call someone over and this poor cashier is like, I'm sorry, it's just like my computer's not registering this. It says it's expired and the call a manager. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, so I got three kids in a cart, groceries full, candy all around because you're in the, mm-hmm. you're not in the self-checkout. So you got candy all around. And I will say, I think I will never do that again. I'm just going to self-checkout. It takes this, it takes less time to do it. It takes less time to do it and you go faster. There's more options and you know you're going to be able to do it. Like you know you're going to be able to check out as opposed Mm -hmm. to you might get stuck in a very small confined space with children Mm -hmm. for 15 to 20 minutes, which is actually hell. Hey, mark it. That's your fact. That's your your honest truth and I'm here for it. I appreciate your vulnerability with that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And there is no limit on self-checkout. None of it says like 15 no. or less. Mm-mm. It's like they want you to do it for all of it. You got to have 100 items and they're like, you better check that out yourself. And we're not going to pay you. Yeah. You're going to pay us. Thank you so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode, we would love a review, subscribe, or for you to share this with a friend you think would like it. Or all three of those things. You can do all three and make our day and help us grow.